Hello, I'm Margaret Ryan, and I'm talking with Brendan Owens. He's the Vice President of Technical Development with the U.S. Green Building Council. Brendan, welcome to Clean Skies News. Thanks very much for having me. You and kind of an alphabet soup of other professional organizations have just announced what you're calling the first model codes and standards for green building in the U.S. Tell us, what does that involve? Well, it involves quite a bit, which is, I think, what makes it newsworthy. Uh, I, I th what we've been trying to do over the course of the last three years is create a platform off of which the floor around building design and construction is raised relative to issues such as energy, of course, but not only energy, but water use, uh, what we make our building out of, uh, out, make our buildings out of, so materials use, uh, where we put our buildings and how they're they're sited and how they treat the site, and then also indoor environmental quality, which is in, uh, has been a uh, uh, an issue that has been at the forefront of uh, certainly green building for the past ten years, but has now made its entree into the building codes. What aspects of a building is this going, going to change for past practice? When I go into a building built yep. to this code, what am I going to notice? Well, I, I think that initially you'll notice relatively little because what, these, what this code, what this model code represents uh, is a standard platform that has taken 15 years worth of green building practice in the United States, figured out what in the, the execution of those projects could be codified and therefore become standard practice and put those into a building code in a way that elevates certain aspects. So you'll see increased stringency and energy efficiency as a result of the implementation of some of these model codes. Uh, but you'll also see sort of an expansion. So we're looking at water efficiency. We're looking at what we make our buildings out of. So initially, I think that you might not see that much that's different about uh, what's here because the concepts that are being codified in this code are, are really concepts that have been proven on the leading edge with using rating systems like LEED and, and now are making their way to something that can be uh, mandated as a, as a baseline minimum. These codes, will they apply to office buildings, shopping centers, homes, everything? The, the, the actual scope of the code is, is written in a very uh, specific way to, to, to make sure that we don't accidentally write a code for a, a building that shouldn't be using this type of guidance. Uh, but generally speaking, we're looking at both commercial and residential structures. What, did you have a specific goal in mind, like any specific increase in building efficiency or reduction in greenhouse gases? I think across the six organizations that are represented uh, in, in, this, in this model code announcement, uh, the primary goal was to avoid what would have been a very inefficient market uh, reality that, that sometimes happens in the world of codes uh, when several organizations all on sort of parallel but not intentionally competing tracks launch their version of, of, of what they want the code to say into the market. Uh, you know, I guess I'm reminded of an announcement that was made in 2009 about the standardization of uh, cell phone chargers. And uh, it was made, you know, this big fanfare was made about the fact that 17 manufacturers had come together to say that we're all going to standardize on one type, of, one type of interface so you won't have to go buy a new charger every now and then. That, that announcement and that action on behalf of the, of, the, of the telecom industry, the mobile phone industry, was necessitated because the consumers were fed up with the fact that you had to have 13 different chargers for all the different devices that you had. And this standardization uh, was something that was you know, not a discriminator in terms of who was buying whose phone. It, it was just a reality of the fact that these different tracks had existed and this was a, a natural outcropping of their design process. I, I think that one of the things that, that this code represents from my perspective is an avoidance of that market confusion, avoidance of that potential for competition, and, and really um, it also represents the first time that, this, that the six organizations that are a partner to the IGCC, the International Green Construction Code, um, have come together to, to jointly advocate for one thing. Well, now, building codes are set by localities. Yes. There's, way, there's quite a bit of difference sometimes yeah. across the country. How are you going to get all those localities to adopt your new model code? Well, I will be the first person to say that building codes are something that's difficult to get excited about. 
Uh, I think that we, we generally see, see them as uh, kind of impediments. Uh, and, and whether you're on the, uh, you know, the, the home builder side or whether you're having a deck built on, out, out, out of, out, uh, on the back of your house, uh, somebody is coming in to, to verify that it's being built to a certain standard. Uh, I think that the partnership that we have uh, forged, particularly with the International Code Council, is leveraging infrastructure that already exists to deliver this new content to an audience that is ready for the messages that the IGCC brings. So you won't see an immediate uh, shift over to the IGCC. What I think you will see is local jurisdictions looking at the, the kit of parts or the toolbox that the IGCC represents and saying this piece is something that should enter our codes today. Do you think there's demand from the consumer end for better green building practices? A absolutely, I do. Absolutely, mm -hmm. I do. Because one of the things that USGBC tracks on an active basis is the number of jurisdictions around the country that have uh, specified or created some kind of mandate around our lead green building rating system, up to and including mandating its use for certain types of projects. There are over 200 jurisdictions in the United States that have adopted something to do with LEED. So we know we have a, an audience of uh, or, uh, jurisdictions that are interested in having something that was built to be a building code. In addition to that, we have the U.S. Conference of Mayors, where uh, several hundred mayors have, have signed on to a commitment to reduce their carbon footprint. This is something that whether or not they knew it when they were signing this document, this is something that they were asking the industry for, and, and this is what we've given them. And for builders, when they go from one jurisdiction to another, yeah. they have to adapt to the different requirements right. and codes. Are, are builders in general, architects, builders, and so on, behind getting a more uniform code? Well, if you look at, if you look at again, the, the, the alphabet soup, um, you see the American Institute of Architects, you see the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers, uh, you see the Illuminating Engineering Society, and you see ICC. Which is the International, International Code, Code Council. International Code Council, yes. And you see USGBC and the uh, ASTM. What that represents, what that alphabet soup represents, mm -hmm. is basically across the, the diverse memberships that we all have, uh, I would be really hard pressed to say that you can't find someone who doesn't have every aspect of the building industry covered. Um, there is a tremendous amount of education that we uh, have in store for this community, for this industry, part of the reason that I'm here today, to get the word out that this is coming, that we want to see action around these issues. Okay. Well, Brenda Owens, Vice President of Technical Development, U.S. Green Building Council, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. And I'm Margaret Ryan, Clean Skies News.